Sure, so my name is Manifa. Um, I'm a 28-year-old um, who's just started on the medical programme at Liverpool University. Um, I opted for the six-year programme um, because my A-levels are not in any sciences. They're all in, like, humanities. Um, so I thought that the six-year programme was sort of better for me. Um, after I graduated, I did a degree in social psychology uh, I was a teacher for just over five years um, and now I'm here at Liverpool Uni. Perfect, thank you. And I guess my first question would be, why medicine? Obviously you, you pursued such a different career path and then you diverted back to medicine. So mm -hmm. it's why you chose medicine um, and I guess what made you divert back to medicine? Sure, the... so... To be honest, when I was younger, if you ask any of my friends, I wanted to do so many things. Like I wanted to be a midwife, I wanted to be a paramedic, I wanted to be a vet, I wanted to be a GP. There's so many different things. So in all honesty, like I wasn't 100% sure about what I wanted to do. So I kind of just went through my school life, kind of just picking subjects that I enjoyed. So for my A-levels, I did geography, theology and English. Um, and those were the subjects I enjoyed at the time. Um, and then I went to uni to do psychology and that's what I enjoyed at the time. So there wasn't really, when I was younger, I didn't have this, oh, I have to become a doctor. I didn't really have that foresight into thinking, okay, well, the qualifications you take will depend sort of like what you end up doing. Yeah. Um, so then I went to uni and I really enjoyed my degree. But then in the third year of my four year degree, my mum got really sick. She um was taken quite ill so I basically took a year out to help look after her and that was kind of the first time that I was like wow like I can see how advanced modern medicine is because she was really ill and basically yeah she's now it's like a miracle like how much better yeah. she is um so that was kind of the first time I started thinking wow like I really want to be able to give back to like other families what modern day medicine has done to us and what these doctors have done for us um so that's when I started like actively thinking, okay, well, how can I pursue medicine? But it kind of wasn't the right time because I hadn't finished my degree yet. I took a year out, as I said. I then finished my degree um, and I wanted to obviously still be with my mum. So I became a teacher and then I just fell in love with teaching. So that's why I ended up being a teacher for five years. Um, and then obviously COVID came and then the thoughts kind of came back to me again, like, what else can I do? Like, how else can I help kind of thing? So I looked into the different routes of becoming a doctor. Um, and that's when I found out that you could still become a doctor without having science A-levels. Um, so yeah, I went for it. <laughs> Perfect. And I guess just to add on that, it's many people I've spoken to who've been in the same same predicament in that there's not enough information out there for yeah, graduate yeah, entry medicine. Yeah. And I think the whole purpose of obviously your page everybody else's page you studied graduate medicine is to just promote and ensure that people know that there's different routes yeah definitely I think there's the misconception as well that if you are a graduate that you can only do graduate entry medicine but yeah you can obviously you can do that that's a great way you know because it's a, it's only four years but there's also you can also do undergraduate medicine if even if you're a graduate or you can do what I'm doing which is like an extended medical course if you don't have the specific science a levels or you haven't done a specific like science degree um and I think there's just a lot of there's not a lot of information out there and the information that is out there I think is geared towards like school leavers rather yeah. than um like mature students and graduates as well yeah for sure and I guess taking it right back to when you first started your application I guess yeah. the first part would be getting your work experience getting your voluntary placement so what did you do uh, what did you want to take to yeah. support your application in that? So my application I would definitely say is quite atypical so uh, what I don't have and I think is really important to mention is I don't have work experience in like hospitals or GPs or anything like that for my application I spoke about my work experience being a teacher um, and basically having lots of experience of working as part of like a team obviously being a doctor it's really important because you work as a multi as part of a multidisciplinary team I spoke about you know communication empathy being able to build and like sustain like positive working relationships with you know, students and their families. Um, and I think that's really important because, again, when I was looking at sort of like mature students or 
or graduates who'd gone into medicine all I kept seeing was oh I got two weeks in this hospital or I did a month shadowing this doctor and that's great um but I didn't have that um and so it's about it's really important to understand what are the qualities that universities are looking for what are the qualities that doctors have to possess and I think even if you don't have like loads of work experience like shadowing a doctor or working in a hospital what work experience do you have that you can actually like reflect on and think actually this has been really successful and this will make me a good doctor because I don't have necessarily like the science background at the moment but I do have lots of other skills and lots of transferable skills that I can bring to the field of medicine so yeah yeah and I think that's a really important point on it's not so much what work experience you've actually undertaken it's that they're more looking for what transferable skills you can get from that yeah they totally understand that you've been a teacher for five years presumably you don't have much time to commit to volunteer work after you've uh, been at your job so I think it's just yeah again showing that you have those transferable skills and almost you can reflect yeah they want you to reflect on what you've been doing for the past two three years and yeah. how that relate to being a doctor at the end of the day Definitely. And I think it's important because if you know that you want to commit to the field of medicine, then you would have done your research anyway. So I think it's about being really honest. Like when I had my interview, I was very honest. And in my personal statement, I didn't say I'd had loads of experience shadowing doctors. So when they asked me, they in my interview, they mainly focused on what transferable skills I had and how would my skill set equip me for being a good doctor. Um, so they will kind of tailor their questions towards you based on like the experience and stuff that you've got they're not going to ask you tell me about the time tell me what you learned when you shadowed a GP if that's not something that you did so yeah yeah for sure and I guess moving on to the second part of your application talking about the like the admissions test did you just say presumably Liverpool Foundation is the UCAT still so the Liverpool Foundation you don't actually have to sit any um tests um I did the UCAT but I did it like very last minute I think my test was like September the 14th and I'm pretty sure I booked onto it literally like the week before I did not I, I'm going to be very honest I did not revise I did not and I got like an, a mediocre score like it could have been obviously a lot better um so when I submitted my applications I actually ended up withdrawing from all of the um, mm-hmm. unis that wanted the UK because I just thought to myself there's no point like them having to sit go through my application when I then looked did, and did my research I was like okay well it's kind of cuspy I then on top of this don't have the work experience do you see what I mean so I just thought you know what so yeah. I withdrew myself from all of the other unis and I just focused on the Liverpool uni um, and it ended up like working up really well because they just look at the work experience that you've got um, and also like your grades and stuff like that it's quite like an individual individualized process I think for Liverpool. Perfect and I guess this is the, the the most challenging part for somebody that's just graduated is do they opt in to study the graduate entry medicine mm. course and sometimes it can take one two three years to actually get in yeah. or do students go down and study a foundation or yeah. a normal undergraduate and yeah. unfortunately the, the unfortunate truth is that you're most likely going to get in because you have the universities know that you have the work ethic you have the experience and just overall maturity over somebody that's coming from 16 um yeah I, I guess my question would be yeah what are your points on that obviously you went to study foundation year so you must have looked at all of yeah. the possible options so I guess what's your take on that I think people need to be honest with themselves I think you meet people along the way and they say I'm going to try for graduate entry medicine and I'm going to apply for X uni then when you look at that uni's entry requirements like sometimes people apply for unis and they don't even fit the criteria so sometimes you can really like the idea of a uni oh I really want to go here or I really want to go there or oh my family's from this place so I'm def I'm only going to go to that uni because I want to live at home and whilst some of those things like are admirable you might want to only go to one of two or three unis you have to look at their entry requirements and if you don't meet them it's not like you have to shout from the rooftops like, I don't meet this entry requirement you will know within yourself if it's asking for you know a minimum of a 2-1 in a life science degree 
but you don't have a life science degree, then you shouldn't be applying there because you don't fulfill the criteria. So I think I think it's really important to look even within if you're going to apply for a graduate entry medicine course, that's absolutely fine. But they're still quite different. Some of them accept two two, some of them only accept two one, some of them look at your GCSE, some of them look at your A level. So it's really important to know what their criteria is. And because I'd done my research and I I think there's only like one or two universities I could have applied to um with my degree of social psychology. I got, I got a first in that. So some of the universities said it doesn't matter what degree you have. But then I thought to myself, if I'm going to do a graduate entry medicine degree, they're going to expect me to have a basic level of science. Uh, as yeah. I said before, I'm 28. When I started this process, I was 27. So, and I did my GCSEs at 16. So that was 11 years pre, like prior to when I was applying. I didn't do science A levels. So, in all honesty, it was 11 years since I'd done any like. Do you see what I mean? Like any science yeah. rather than the little bits of science we did in my degree so even if I did get in by some miracle it only would have harmed myself because yeah. I would have already you hear about students talking about imposter syndrome or do you see what I mean like comparing themselves to others so I just think at the end of the day you need to pick a course that is going to allow you to become the best doctor you can be it's not about oh my course was five years your course was four years minus six years it doesn't matter like we're all going to end up in the same place anyway so yeah and I guess I can add to that in from doing these talks and these discussions is that I was really surprised in the amount of people that actually went on to study the undergraduate or yeah. the foundation and they think our oh, graduate entry is for just solely graduates and yeah. it's their competitive but from like people saying statistics of like 40% of King's College London undergraduate degrees are filled with graduate entry yeah. like it's just showing that there there is a there is an overflow of graduates wanting to study and I guess that's 100%. almost feeding over into the well the foundation and the, the yeah. five year course due to the just the mass competitiveness of graduate Definitely. I think as well because there's such the um you know access courses are really like prominent now so you can obviously go to like a college or something and do an access to medicine course and then you can apply to a different uni so that's another way that you can do it so you can then still do the five-year undergrad course but you've done your access course before so technically you've then been studying for six years but not in the same place um so I think that's something to like really think about as well because not all unis accept the access course if you are going to do that route it's really important that you know what unis accept it um but again, it's in terms of what do you want? Like, for me, the access course is great. But for me, I didn't like the fact that I wouldn't necessarily know if I was going to get into a specific uni. Whereas with Liverpool, you apply once and then you've, you're you there for the whole six years. You don't have to, like, reapply, if you get what I mean. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I guess to, to talk about your, to move on and talk about, like, your interviews that you had at um, Liverpool was yeah. it the panel style or MLI yeah. style? It was, but it was panel. panel style interview. Um, one of the things I've just started talking about this on my um, Instagram page, actually, is I don't think there's that much information about panel style interviews. Um, when I was like searching or oh, what's like a kind of what is a panel style interview, I was kind of OK because I'd had interviews before. Obviously, to become a teacher, you have to have an interview. And I'd done like various other, you know, like summer jobs and stuff like that. Um but I think if you're someone who's not had an interview before, like a panel interview is quite daunting to just kind of sit there and to have multiple people sort of like judging what you're saying and determining, yeah, we we really want you at our medical school kind of thing. So, yeah, mine was a panel interview. Um, but it was I, it was quite enjoyable, to be fair. I think a panel interview is quite nice because you can really showcase like what you know and you can really showcase like what you have to offer. It's not necessarily the same as an MMI where you know you're having to adapt to these like slightly strange scenarios like with the panel yeah. interview, like it's all about you they're list they ask you one question but they listen to what you're saying each time so to be fair it was it was a nerve-wracking experience because you know you want something so much but it was actually quite enjoyable to be fair <clears throat> yeah and I guess it's I guess it's about the person like who you are well who you are as a person obviously some people are going to perform excellent <laughs> in MMIs. 
just to the nature of them quickly then being able to quickly build like a rapport you know with the examiner yeah with, exactly. with a panel interview you need to it's more slow paced you need to you, you go into much more detail and yeah it, as bad as it sounds i think from talking to people panel interviews are almost a dying breed <laughs> almost all medical schools are going towards mmis but i yeah. guess if that's for the better or the worst yeah it's time will tell i think they have that like at um liverpool for my foundation year i'm pretty sure there's only about like 12 to 15 medics um yeah. but then they you can do the foundation year if you want to become a vet and also a dentist as well so i think for all of us is about 30 so there's because the numbers are quite small they have that time to give everyone their panel interviews whereas if you think about how many hundreds of people get interviews for medical schools they have not got time to kind of like yeah. sit there and I, do you see what I mean I think that's why I think it's quite good to have the MMI type style interviews but I'll be honest I wasn't like upset or anything when I found out it was a panel interview I was I was pretty pretty pleased with that <laughs> and I guess one thing I really wanted to touch on was the, your experience within like a foundation course. These are mm. mostly students coming from, well, their A-levels. So yeah. I guess how did you feel like, did you feel like you was advantageous in any way to what so the, these students are? No. So the beauty with Liverpool is actually the foundation course that I'm doing, it's specifically geared for like mature students so actually we are all I think I'm one of the oldest in the cohort anyway but everyone has not everyone is most people are sort of like older the majority of people on the course have actually got a degree as well um most of us are like career changes um so to be honest I I didn't necessarily feel like I had or I have any kind of advantage over them because I think everyone kind of knows their like study styles and like stuff like that but I do think it'll be interesting obviously when I go into first year because obviously most of those students will be um I guess a level leavers like 18 year olds but in all honesty I think I have I'm gonna have so much to learn from them like I was saying to some of my friends that when I was 18 and when like I was doing my a levels like honestly like we weren't as serious and as like studious as these 18 year olds are now like they work (laughs) so hard and I honestly think they have so much to like teach us I follow quite a lot of like um 18 19 year olds on like Instagram they they're just they're so good they're so you know confident and they know they they just work so hard they're so resilient and I definitely was not like that at 18 so (laughs) I think even though yes there's going to be like a 10 year age gap and I think I'm aware of that I think in some ways they are way more mature than a lot of like more well, than I was at 18 to be honest so I don't I don't think it will be um it will be a bad thing I think there's definitely a lot I can learn from from them no yeah man I don't think that's any knock to any anyone that's gone down a different career path or anybody that's not wasn't ready to job commit to the degree I guess it's at the end of the day, it's, it's a life-changing profession. Yeah. You're, you're in it for life. and <laughs> Some people are ready to make that decision out of their A-levels, but other people are just astounded that you have to make this commitment yeah. for your lifelong career at this age. And that's why some people do come back to you know study it later on in life. And I guess it's, it's not like you're, you're immature at the time. It's just you, you, weren't, you weren't ready to make that commitment yeah. and it's just making sure if that's right for you and but I mean you're there so <laughs> yeah I know I think I think it's important I think everyone has their different paths and I think everyone has something different that they can bring to the table and I think you know if you are a mature student who whether you apply for graduate entry medicine whether you apply for undergrad or a foundation year I think what's really important is to understand what you have to offer because you wouldn't be there unless your medical school saw that you had something to offer so I think it's really easy for us to like compare ourselves to other you know other people I think at the beginning I was like oh I'm going to be 28 and now I'm going to be so much older but there's you know we'll be able to learn from each other and I think that's that's the be- that's the beauty of it and that's also what sort of like medicine is about like when you're a doctor there's going to be people older than you younger than you the same age as you it's not going to be oh I can't treat this patient or whatever because oh, I don't know of age like you're just you just have to get on with it so 
Yeah, for sure. And I guess there's that one saying of everybody wants everybody to be a good doctor. Nobody wants a bad doctor. So, <laughs> um, I guess looking back now, is there anything in particular you wish you would have known before you began your degree as a med student? As a med student? Um, well, I started Instagram quite late. I only started Instagram about <laughs> two months ago. Um, and I wish I'd just start, I wish I'd sort of joined before because actually I found it really beneficial in terms of just getting like tips. Um, and there are different people who have gone or who go to the medical school that you're applying to. And actually even just seeing like a day in the life of, you know, a, a student at Liverpool or Manchester or Leeds, wherever it is that you're going to apply, I think there's something really nice seeing how those students are coping. Like if they've had a really good day or they've had like a really exciting anatomy lesson or whatever it is they're doing, I think that's quite nice. Um, most people on Instagram have some kind of why I chose to study here. And that's quite useful because they can talk about the specific route. They can talk about, you know, whether it's that uni does like PBL or CBL or what, do you, do you see what I mean? Like what type of structure um, the medical degree is. And I think, to be fair, I was limited in my in where I could apply because I knew I wanted to apply for a foundation year. I knew that's what I wanted to do. But um, yeah, I think it would have been useful to kind of see that there's, you know, people come from all different paths and all different walks because yeah. also you see people that graduate and you're thinking, oh, this person's a fantastic doctor. And they say, oh, you know, yeah, I did a foundation year. And you usually think, oh, I wouldn't have thought that. But I think it's nice because you can sometimes think that you're the only person kind of like going through it. So, yeah, yeah I think, yeah, I'd have liked to have seen other people's journeys and the different types of journeys that there were beforehand so it didn't feel like the process I was going through at the time was like so alien if that makes sense yeah, yeah sure perfect and I guess you've been at med school for well it's almost half a year just over <laughs> half a year at this point and how how have you found the competitiveness obviously you said it's quite a small yeah. cohort of obviously coming from a previous degree I was there. I'm not putting words in your mouth, but normally science degrees are very, everybody wants to hit those first. Everybody yeah. wants to get the highest grades possible and almost everybody's competing. How, how have you found that translate towards your degree now? Is it totally different? Um, um, to be honest, because I've, my degree has been online since the beginning, I've not like met anyone. I haven't experienced any like competitiveness. Um, but I think, you do hear that foundation years specifically can be quite competitive because there are some whereby only the top part of the cohort can go through to medicine. Whereas one of the beauties about Liverpool is as long as you get a specific grade, everyone goes through. So I personally don't feel there's any like competitiveness at the moment. I've not experienced anything um, and everyone's just been really lovely. Um, so that's been really good everyone's sort of like quite friendly um you know if you haven't understood something on a lecture like I'm, I'm able to go and like ask someone I didn't really get that like what like what was your interpretation so that was actually quite nice and I think as well because we've all come from something else or you know maybe not a degree I think everyone wants everyone else to succeed everyone wants yeah. to kind of make sure that we all kind of progress on to year one so that's been nice um obviously I'm not on year one yet so I obviously I can't talk about the competitiveness there but even again with this whole like Instagram like culture and things like that from what I've seen people are really nice like because people like share their notes on Instagram and yeah. they might say oh I did this that was a big mistake make sure you don't do that or make sure you try and do this 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 and this so um I'm hopeful that moving forward um it won't be that competitive I know there will be some competitive element because obviously you get ranked against each other I mean things like that yeah. in sort of like the later years but I think it's, it's just I think everyone knows that's just like the way that it is I mean hopefully it's not that people are going to like sabotage one person to yeah. make sure that they're crazy better. <laughs> no yeah and I guess to get in like to get into the the nitty-gritty of yeah. your 
experience. I guess is there any like particular like myths or misconceptions that you felt like stigmatized within med schools before you got there? Um, I definitely think there's a stigma that like certain unis are better than others to do like medicine um and I think it's really important that if you are someone who wants to apply to medicine there's no point looking at like the league tables for medicine because a medical degree is very unique in the sense that everyone has to like basically learn the same content you can't become a doctor and like you you've not covered like the heart or you know what I mean? like, you've not covered the brain like everyone covers the same content it's just that obviously university structure it in different ways um so I think that was I think especially when I was younger that was kind of what I heard you know like oh look at the league tables and that's what I did when I went to my uni I wanted to go there because it was a uni that was a good uni like it was in the top 10 so I was like that's where I'm gonna I really want to go but it's not necessarily the same for medical school so I would say the first stigma I guess is okay whilst yes you might want to go to a specific uni make sure you're you want to go there for the right reasons um I guess another one and you've touched upon it is that um undergrad medicine is only for undergrads and like foundation years are only for people that don't have a levels like that is not the case at all as like we've spoken about today and um, you will find graduates kind of like everywhere um but yeah I think those are my main sort of like and as well like you I guess you also hear that stigma that like medical students don't have time outside of their studies to do like anything else um but I, I think it's just the same with anything. I think if you're organised and if you structure your time properly, there's no reason that, I mean, it's a bit different now. We're in a pandemic, like where are, where are we going? Nowhere. But <laughs> I mean, I, I work part time. I work quite a few hours as a tutor on the side and I've managed to do that since the beginning. And I plan to keep up with it throughout my studies. Um, I think you just have to be like really clever with how you plan your time. But it doesn't mean that, as a medical student you're not going to have time to do anything else basically yeah and I guess it's going back to the point of deciding a uh, student deciding do they want to study graduate entry and be swamped with all this this work where it's basically two in one or do they go down the path of studying undergraduate and as you say like work part-time and I guess this platform is partly to show show students that people like you and others actually gone down that route and able to work part-time to yeah. ultimately like fund their degree while studying yeah. I don't think that's that's very spoke upon it's no that's another stigma though isn't it because I think as well you know some people might think well if you're a graduate and you're doing undergrad medicine well maybe like you must be funding it yourself so you must come from money or something like that but yeah. that's not necessarily the case like you still do get student loan or you get maintenance loan um if you're doing medicine as an undergrad or say like a foundation year uh, but you don't get your tuition fees paid so obviously you need to cover those somehow but there are lots of different ways to do it so I use my maintenance loan to actually pay for my tuition and then I use my money from my part-time work to like sustain me basically yeah but it is doable. Uh, Lots of unis as well offer like bursaries, um, especially for like mature students. There's like scholarships for mature students. So that's also something that you should like check out because that might be the reason you apply for one uni and not another. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I guess that brings Nat on to uh, what keeps you motivated in such an intense course like medicine. Obviously, presumably it's very different now again we're in a pandemic but yeah I guess what keeps you motivated in such an intense course like medicine um I think I think it's just the desire to want to do it I think there isn't kind of like an option like I've always kind of anything I've done like when I like did my a-levels there was sometimes a period of times I didn't like it during my degree there were some bits maybe I didn't like when I was teaching there, and I did my teacher training there were some bits I didn't like but you kind of just push through and I think every single time you're pushing through you're pushing through that just makes you a stronger person and that just makes you more resilient so I think first of all for me I just kind of feel like there is no other option like I've committed to this now I've moved away from you know like 
my home, I've moved away from my friends, my family to a completely different city where I don't know anyone, there kind of isn't an option. So that's motivation number one, waking up and seeing myself in a new surrounding every day. Like that's the first thing like, I, ha- I have to succeed. <laughs> um, I think secondly as well, um, obviously I'm, as I said before, like I'm older, I'm 28. So you start to develop you know, you you make money from your job. You can do what you want. You could, do you see what I mean? There's that level of independence. And going back to uni, I'd be lying to you if I said that, you know, I was in the same financial position now as I was, say, like this time last year. That's obviously not true because I don't work full time. So I think that is also another motivation because it, again, reminds you, like, what you've given up. Um, but I also think as well, this is one of the reasons I joined Instagram. And I know it sounds really silly, but to just see like students, doctors, nurses, whoever just succeeding and just doing such a good job every single day, that really, really motivates me. And that really inspires me. Um, And obviously before I had Instagram, I didn't, obviously I knew that this was happening and doctors and nurses and everyone was working, but it's not something I physically saw with my own eyes every single day. Um, Yeah. So yeah, for me, like social media is helping me as well. Yeah, and I think it's about having that, you being able to connect with their story. I think that's what it boils down to and yeah. you being able to see what, what they're doing day to day and yeah. you know, what they're getting up to and you almost get to know know their story inside out. And I guess it, going back to motivation, it's I guess it, it, it's for everybody, it's just having that having that spark lit now and again which yeah. obviously is a motivation and I guess like for me speaking to every, every time I jump on a car with somebody and like hear their story it, it's almost that spark being lit and even though yeah. say, say you're doing like 12 hour revision sessions it's almost every once a week you you're getting reminded of this is where you could be yeah you know in a few years time if you just keep going on and as you said it's about just it's about just having that resilience and having that reminder of if you keep going exactly you will you're going to be on the other side of that screen one day yeah yeah I think that's a really good point and that's really important and that's why I think it's so great that you know you've got a platform like yours because you know you're going to have people that resonate with just one person you know you're going to have someone who thinks oh I didn't have this or oh my gosh I did biology at uni and this person's now done this or I did psychology or I did maths or whatever it is I did music whatever it is you know it's just to show that you can do it and it's not you know you're not going to be the only one who's gone down your exact path there is someone else out there who's done it as well so yeah for sure thank you and I guess on the flip side to my original question yeah with such a long and strenuous course how do you find time to plan for like rest and self-care obviously COVID has probably <laughs> all of that but I guess it still relates to um the situation so I I don't know if I get this from being a teacher but I plan absolutely everything so every Sunday evening I sit down with my week's timetable and what I do is I put my lectures in so I know where my lectures are. And then obviously, as I said, I, I do part-time tuition as well. So I put my tutoring hours in and then that tells me what hours I've got left. So then I will say, I don't know, like, okay, between these two times, you're going to have a break or you're going to do this or whatever. Um, and then I also plan my, like when I'm going to consolidate the learning that I would have done in the week as well. Um, and I also make sure that Sunday, I don't do any, I don't tutor, I don't do any like uh, uni work. Sunday's the day to myself and Saturday I only work like half day, well just okay. over half, depends when I wake up, but maybe I'm more, maybe like one or two and then after that like I have the rest of the weekend to myself and that I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if I have not finished what I needed to finish on Friday, I'm not doing it on my days off yeah. and I think it's really important to set those boundaries for yourself because otherwise you don't actually get a, a true rest. Um, yeah. And, you know, if you're not well rested, you're not going to be able to do as well as you could have done anyway. So there's no point, like, running yourself into the ground. And, yeah, so I'm a big advocate of just planning everything. Obviously, some things change. You might plan to have, like, a a break or whatever. But I think where possible, I think it's useful to, like, plan. Um, yeah, and that really, really works for me. 
Yeah, and I guess to add to that, it's it's a saying that I read on on Instagram. Uh, it's run your life around, run medicine around your life, not let medicine run your life. And yeah. it's almost medicine can take over your life if you let it. Almost, yeah. So I, I guess it's it's really important in what you just said of having that structure and yeah. almost finding time for yourself and finding time for yeah. or rest at the end of the day because you are studying a long strenuous hard course and if you let it take over your life it will so yeah exactly exactly but also I think it's important to let your friends know as well like you know last year when I was like working I would speak to someone on the way to work I'd speak to someone at lunchtime I'd speak to someone on the way home and when I got home I'd finished I didn't have to work so I could kind of just do what I wanted and now I can't necessarily do that because like I do have to study but I think it's really important to let your friends and your family know like look okay I roughly will finish studying by like eight o'clock do you see what I mean so it's like they don't get annoyed with you thinking oh like you're ignoring me or whatever it's just I think everyone needs to almost now know that you're doing something else and kind of like not get fed up with you you know you still want that one of my really good friends is getting married in a couple of months and uh, she's getting married out of the country and I really want to go so obviously I'm going to go but it's just you have to communicate I've said to her you know I won't be able to be there for like the whole week but I'm definitely going to make sure that I'm there so it's about communicating to people so they know what you can and what you can't manage don't overcommit to something that you know you can't do because you don't want to let yourself down and you don't want to let someone else down either so yeah it's about being like transparent I think Perfect. and I guess obviously you've been at Liverpool for uh, about half a year now. Yeah. What does what does a week in the life of a Liverpool med student look like? Obviously, I guess again, COVID has drastically changed that. But yeah, a lot of sitting at a desk. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm quite lucky. So I have Mondays. I don't have lectures, and I don't have lectures on a Friday either. Uh, this semester because my timetable slightly changed. So on a Monday, what I will do is I will make notes for the lectures I have for the week coming up so I will look at the topics I'm supposed to do I'll watch like YouTube videos um my uni like sends us notes so I'll like fill in some notes um they also have like pre they have slides to do with what you're gonna learn so I'll make notes on those slides so I'll do that on Monday and then obviously Tuesday Wednesday Thursday I'll have my lectures in those evenings I'll kind of consolidate my learning and then on Friday, what I will do is I will consolidate my learning again. So I'll try and by that point, maybe I won't write in like continuous prose, but I will look at like an exam question and I'll kind of like bullet point my answer. Um, and I tend to do that in like one color. It doesn't matter, like black, blue, whatever. And I'll keep I'll keep that. I'll save that on my iPad um, until I don't know, like I revisit the topic again in a couple of weeks and see if I've retained anything else or if I've understood something, then I'll write the answer again in a different colour pen. So over time I can see like my understanding improving and I can see what my misconceptions were and like why that's wrong. Um so it's the same thing. I do pre-learning, then I do my actual learning, then I'll do like my consolidation of what I've learned to like it's kind of like a learning sandwich, I guess. <laughs> I guess you you've got the best of the bunch in you being a teacher you yeah. know, is learning. <laughs> so you're you're almost applying the stuff that you do in the classroom to yeah. yourself. So Yeah, um, it's really helped, honestly. Like it does help. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I guess it's good to ask a question, obviously. You you seem like you plan everything. So what's your vision going into the future then? Obviously, where where do you see yourself? So this is one thing I haven't planned. <laughs> Because I do think, so I do like to plan where possible, but I do think if you over plan, you can like miss opportunities. And so I'm very conscious in that I don't know, I know, I don't know anything about medicine. Like, I'm so <laughs> early on my journey, but I can see things that I would like. So I was a primary school teacher. So I think I would like, you know, working with children, like in obviously like pediatrics. Uh, my degree was in psychology. So um, again I'm interested in like mental health I'm really interested in like palliative care because I think it's really important to just you know give people that dignity and you know that they keep them having that pride and things like that um, but I have 
absolutely like those are what I think at the moment but honestly like I think I just want a really open mind I also like I really like building like a rapport with someone so I also like the idea of being a GP because you know a lot of the time you can have patients from when they're born like right up until you know yeah you know the other end of the of life so I think what's important to me is just to keep an open mind um and to take every single opportunity so you know join different societies or you know speak to different um doctors that you know specialize in different things I think that's really important um but I just know that I want to be obviously a good doctor someone who really puts obviously their patients first um but in terms of what like what area of medicine I'm not I'm not too sure yet <laughs> oh yeah and I guess that's a perfect way to approach it and just let yourself go through the process and yeah. ultimately you'll decide along the way Exactly. You're, you're still at the the starting line yeah. and you've got a long run until you hit the finish so I totally agree with that um, when you mention obviously society's extracurriculars yeah. how have you how have you found that at Liverpool at the moment obviously Covid has probably changed it but have you found time to manage like society's extracurriculars whilst also studying uh, your foundation so I have joined one society but in all honesty like I've not actually gone to any of the any events not because they haven't put events on they genuinely have um but it's just been at the time like I don't know maybe I had like tutoring or like something like that but the societies are there um I also think I try and be because I cho- I obviously I study online I do my tuition online and these events are all online as well I try to make sure I'm not just spending my whole life staring at a screen because do you see what I mean? Like you do have to like go out, go for a walk or like call up a friend or something like that. So I think I'll probably be a bit better when it comes to societies once all of this is over because I can physically go out and physically meet people. Um, whereas at the moment, it's just a lot of the same, like doing something online and um, and things like that. But I still keep up to date with like what the different societies are doing I just in all honesty at at the moment I haven't gone to any events Mm. and but that'll change yeah Uh, so for future medical students Mm -hmm. watching this video are any like golden piece of advice you give them for somebody just going through the application process I think as cliche as it sounds I would say don't compare yourself to anyone else like your journey is going to be completely different to the next person your experience even if you know you've got two friends that have got exactly the same a levels exactly the same degree their life experiences are different so they are going to be able to offer different things how they've been brought up you know their values you know their morals you're going to be completely different doctors so I would really say as much as possible don't compare yourself to anyone else try and let go from I want to only go to this uni, I would say really look at it from like an objective point of view, look at your skills and your qualifications and look, okay, what does this uni want? And if that's a uni that you've always seen yourself at, but they do not, you don't fulfill their entry requirements, don't waste your time and apply there because we want to make sure that you have the best possible chance of getting in. You know, you don't have like, an infinite amount of choices when you apply to medical school you have only a few so you need to make sure that each and every application that you make you know you're giving yourself the best possible chance um and actually if worse comes worse and you think you know I my maybe my application is not strong enough this year see how you go maybe some people apply and they do it as like a trial run um but just try not to let it like be defeated if you don't get accepted the first time but you know this is what you want to do just keep trying because you will get there and I think every single person that's applied multiple times and they've eventually got in they have will all say you know I'm a I'm going to be a better doctor now than had I've got in my first time or my second time or whatever time it is so yeah yeah and I guess going back to your the first point you made was I think it boggles down to that dreaded ratio number of yeah. 30 applicants per place. And sometimes I, I think that disheartens 
some students in saying, oh, 30, there's 30 applicants per place, but they meet my requirements, so I'm yeah. not going to apply there. And it's like, you don't know where you're going to rank within that 30. No. That 30 ratio is just 30, 30 other students the same as you applying, but yeah. that doesn't mean you're going to rank first or last. Yeah. I think it's just having that that knowledge of apply where best suits you yeah in your because i guess it comes in two phases in the first phase you are just a number mm. you just fit a category but it's getting to that second phase where you can show yourself with an interview if that be mmi or panel and at that point you do become an individual but it's mm -hmm. it's making sure you're not sliced mm. within the first step which is the most important thing yeah I think as well though if you really ask people you know if they haven't been successful successful with one of their places if you really ask a lot of people a lot of people will say oh no I didn't really fit that criteria but I just really wanted to go there or like, even with some of my choices like I know I didn't fit the criteria but I was like oh, yeah why not do you see what I mean like it's, you're not doing yourself any favours <laughs> so yeah research I would say yeah and um I guess finally for someone starting out the first day at Liverpool, what would be your take on tips for that student? Um, I would first day, I would just say be nice. <laughs> I don't know, it sounds really <laughs> lame, but I would honestly say be nice. Like you are going to be with these students for, depending on what course you do for four, five or six years, that is a long time. And you are going to have highs, but there are inevitably going to be lows. And you don't know, you know, how someone, you know, you, you just don't know what impact someone is going to have on your life. And so I would say just be nice. Even if you meet someone and you think, oh, I don't think that person's my kind of person. Like you actually don't know because you, you don't know each other. It's just first impressions, isn't it? So yeah, I would definitely say just be nice to everybody, listen to everyone, give everybody a chance because you're going to be with them for an incredibly long time. Um, and you're going to be seeing these people more than your actual like friends from home. You're going to be seeing these people more than your family. You're going to vent to them. You're probably going to cry to them. <laughs> so yeah, just be nice to be honest, because you don't want to be that person that's not nice. And then you have no friends because that will be terrible and it will be really hard. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so I guess is there uh, in a way, our viewers can find you online or get in contact with you like plug your instagram yeah so my insta is mon underscore the medic perfect uh, <laughs> again thank you massive thank you for taking no the time out of your uh, day to come speak with me again thank it's as me. i said before it's real pleasure to speak with everybody so thank you again and thank you so i much. hope you enjoy the rest of your day what's left <laughs> No, yeah, I'm sure I will. The sun is out today, so I'm going to go for a walk. Fingers crossed it doesn't start chucking it down the rain. <laughs> right. Perfect. And uh, hopefully we'll speak again soon. Thank sure. you. See you later. Right. Take care. Bye.